Let's say we have a set of microservices. On the left, we have the order service, which talks to three other services on the right. So on every request, the order service will perform some logic and based on the type of request, it will make the call to one of these remote services. So in this case, when the URL is slash payment, the order service can choose to call the payment service to do the further processing. And let's say this order service is built using Spring Boot, which internally uses Tomcat. This Tomcat will have a servlet thread pool, let's say of size 200 threads. And on every request, a thread will be assigned to serve that particular request. In that thread, we'll do the logic, which includes calling the remote service, which is the payment service. And once the payment service returns the response and this logic is completed, and we have returned the response back to the caller, the thread is freed again. It can serve any other requests. And since the servlet thread pool size is 200, there can be multiple simultaneous requests, each of different kind, which can be served simultaneously. So in this case, there are two requests of type payment. They are assigned their own threads and there is another request for inventory and it also runs on its own thread. Now let's say one of the services that the order service talks to, which in this case is payment service, becomes slow. So in this case, the payment service will not be able to quickly return the response to the order service. All the threads which are calling the payment service will be waiting for a while for the payment service to return a response. Let's say the other services like the cart service and inventory service are not facing the same issue. So any threads which were calling the inventory service and the cart service will do their job very quickly and become free very quickly. And now when there are other requests coming in after that, let's say in this case we have one more payment request and one more inventory request, two other threads will be assigned to it. Now since payment service is still slow, the third thread will also be waiting for it to send the response while the thread which was handling the inventory is again freed very quickly. So now from two, we have three threads waiting for the payment service to return a response. And thus after a while, even if we have a mix of requests coming in, since payment service is slow and all the threads calling the payment service are not able to get freed very quickly, it is possible that all the threads at one point in time will be waiting for the payment service to do its job. And that is when the order service itself cannot serve any more request, even of type card service or the inventory service. So the problem in one dependency of order service is not allowing it to call even the other dependencies and fulfill the request of other dependencies. To ensure that slowness in one dependency does not affect any other dependencies, we have to roughly divide our thread pool by the number of services we have. So if the thread pool is of size 200 and we have three remote services being called, we'll roughly divide the thread pool into 200 by three. We want to ensure all the requests for payment service maximum take only these number of threads and not more than that. So let's use a smaller pool size so that we can understand this issue. So in this case, the size of the pool is nine. So we will divide it into sets of three. So we want to ensure that at a time, there are only three requests for the payment service. So in this case, we have one request for slash payment. So we have the count of the requests currently being served as one. Similarly, we have two more requests after that, and both of them are also for payment. And even these two are waiting for a response. Number of requests currently being served is three. And that is the max amount we are allowed to perform. Now, if there is one more request for payment, since we have already crossed max, we should not allow it to call the payment service. We will block that request from calling the payment service. And instead, we should return a default response or an error response back to the user. And if we do that, our thread will quickly become free and it will not have the same problem as before where the whole thread pool was being exhausted because of the payment service. And this pattern of setting a maximum threshold of number of concurrent requests, tracking the number of current in-flight requests to a particular service, and then accordingly allowing or denying the request to the external service is called a bulkhead pattern. So bulkhead pattern is mainly used to isolate the dependencies 
such that a problem in one dependency does not affect our ability to allow the requests of any other dependencies so in this case having this bulkhead for the payment service allowed us to ensure that we can still keep on serving the request which are for the card service and the inventory service and the name bulkhead comes from a technique in building the boats where the boat is divided into multiple sections such that if a single section is flooded it does not flood the entire boat so here we are initializing a counter let's say a count for counting the number of concurrent requests currently being made for the payment service of course we will also have similar count for the card service and the inventory service whenever someone makes a call to the order service using slash pay or slash payment this method will be called here we'll first check if the current number of concurrent request is less than the threshold that we have set so in our case the threshold was 3 if that is the case then we are allowed to make the call to the payment service and before making that call we'll increment the current count to 1 after we have successfully made this call to the payment service we'll decrement that count if the payment service is slow then this count will be greater than threshold and in that case we'll just return a default response and will not allow our thread to be in a blocking state instead of having a custom implementation we could use this library of resilience for j there is also a library of hystrix which was created by netflix but that is currently in a maintenance mode so in resilience for j we have to first create a bulkhead configuration this is the configuration where we'll mention how many concurrent requests are allowed for a remote service in this case that count is 150 there is also a configuration of max wait time which says that if there are currently 150 calls being made and if there is a 151st call then how much amount of time should that request wait before sending back the default or the error response then we'll create the actual bulkhead from the bulkhead configuration bulkhead provides a method of decorate supplier and there are also methods to decorate a runnable or a callable so here we are saying this is my method which is actually making the call to the remote service decorate it with this configuration so it will wrap the bulkhead logic around our custom business logic and it will give us the supplier and now we are free to execute that particular decorated supplier and we can do that using this class of try and if the number of concurrent calls currently are less than 150 it will go to the payment service and the result can be success and if the count is greater than threshold then we can immediately return a default response and this decorate supplier is a very simple wrapper where we have our code and it will be decorated with a bulkhead logic to update any in-flight request counter like we did in our custom skeleton code and the logic to allow or deny the request to the remote service based on the current counter so that's a pattern bulkhead it allows us to isolate dependencies and it also allows us to avoid exhausting our thread pool by this concept of load shedding or failing fast that's it for this video thanks a lot for watching and see you in the next one bye